After the Omicron led COVID wave, many countries said, enough is enough, we're done with COVID, and decided to do away with COVID restrictions. Not only in public places, but also in schools, restaurants, shops, and even some airplanes. What followed was a resurgence in COVID cases, with many countries now seeing record high numbers. This time around, though, it is thought to be led by the BA.2 Omicron subvariant. Today, I'm joined here with virologist Dr. Shahid Jamil to discuss what this BA.2 subvariant is, how it ties to the COVID situation in the world right now, and how it can in- impact India going forth. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Jamil. Um, Getting right into it, a lot of countries, especially in Europe and in Asia, are seeing um, resurgence in COVID cases and are seeing record high COVID cases, even more than they did since the beginning of the pandemic. So what do you make of this situation right now? If you look at Europe, uh, they are completely open. Um, I can tell you about UK, where I'm now based, uh, that everything is open. All mask requirements are gone. Uh, so instead of requirement, it is just a request to wear masks in on public transport. They have also now made it, to, taken away the legal requirement to report and isolate yourself if you know that you are positive. So which essentially means that all regulations are gone. It's completely open. Omicron, especially BA2, uh, is highly infectious, highly transmissible. And that is running through the population. But you would have also noticed that the mortality is very low. In fact, if you look across Europe, uh, both UK and mainland Europe, the mortality is 0.1% or less, which is essentially like seasonal flu. And the reason for that is the vaccine status is very high. Uh, You know, all of these countries have vaccinated 75% or more of their overall population. We're not talking just adults, overall population. So with vaccination rates high, and we know that vaccines protect from disease, but not from infection, and the Omicron, especially the BA.2 variant being so infectious, infections are happening. Uh, So that's what's happening in in Europe. Also, um, you know, talking about South Korea, for instance, they have also been seeing a rise in deaths, even though they do have a great vaccine coverage of over 65%. So uh, what do you make of that? I calculated the rate today. And the rate is very low. In fact, uh, the numbers are right in front of me. 0.07% mortality. So that's the, that's the data today. Mm-hmm. So, you know, South Korea, if you remember, did very well early in the pandemic. They had very few cases. Just like New Zealand, which also showed a lot of cases mm-hmm. now. So protecting their population early, they did such a good job that later there were a lot of people that remained unexposed to infection. And there is, there is now evidence that is building up that infection gives a much better protection than vaccination. And this is, uh, this is against, against reinfection. So all this thing really fits the puzzle. You know, the pieces in the puzzle are fitting together. So I, I think while high numbers are, uh, are discouraging, high numbers are worrisome. Uh, but severe disease and mortality is still getting contained. And you mentioned the BA.2 Omicron subvariant. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? What do we know about it so far um, as far as transmissibility is concerned? Can it cause more severe illness? You know, it's a natural process. Viruses mutate all the time. Uh, BA.2 is a sublineage of what we use what was earlier the Omicron uh, variant of concern. So Omicron has developed multiple sublineages, which means that minor mutations have developed in Omicron. 
so it is still the Omicron variant, but there are sublineages. Mm -hmm. And the three main sublineages are BA.1, BA.1.1, and BA.2. Uh, the status right now is that about 57% of the virus circulating globally is BA.2, about 42% is BA.1, and the remaining 1% is Delta. So Delta has completely been replaced by these two sublineages of Omicron. And BA.2 is more transmissible than BA.1, so it is overtaking the other sublineage. This is something very natural. Uh, you know, the virus is adapting to high transmission. In Japan, they did a study in animals, in hamsters to be exact. And these were unvaccinated animals. And when they compared BA1 and BA2, they found that BA2 caused more severe disease than BA1. But humans are not unexposed anymore. Humans have either been infected earlier by another variant or humans have been vaccinated. Uh, so in human populations from multiple countries, the data that's come in shows that there is no significant difference between the severity of infection caused by BA.2 compared to the earlier Omicron. So that's the human data. Do you think this BA.2 has the potential to lead to a fourth COVID wave in India? I, I think the problem is that in media, it's, it's very binary. It's either fourth wave or nothing. Uh, I don't see it like that. You know, there will be sporadic uh, surges happening in different places at different times. Uh, mm -hmm. India is very nicely vaccinated. More importantly, India has had a lot of infection. I will take you back to July 2021 when the ICMR 4th zero survey results came out. And that showed 67% of people had antibodies, which was a time when vaccination rate in India was, was fairly low. Now, 67% of India translates to about 930 million people. If I extrapolate from that to this time, my estimate is that roughly 1.1 to 1.2 billion Indians have antibodies to this virus. So there is, there is very widespread exposure as well as vaccination. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that we will see a big, what media is calling fourth wave. But depending upon the vaccination status, depending upon how much immunity has waned over time, we will see surges happening in different parts of the country, which is a natural thing. Uh, but I think if somebody is vaccinated, doubly vaccinated, uh, that will protect them from severe disease. Uh, as a policy, I think it would be very good if boosters are open to all adults irrespective of whether you are 59 years old or 61 years old. So this policy of opening boosters to just 60 plus is a bit restrictive. I, I hope the government will consider opening up boosters for everyone because global data shows that boosters do afford extra protection, especially against a very uh, highly infectious variant. But even without boosters, I think a lot of Indians would continue to be protected from severe disease. So uh, that's, that's how I look at it.